Happy Wednesday, kittens! This is still not a podcast, and this is the third time I'm recording now. And today is the 19th of September, 2012. We're having a lovely day here, and I hope you all are too. Um, autumn has definitely reached my neck of the woods, and I'm hoping the rest of you are seeing a cool down too. And, you know, it's that time of year for pumpkin everything, and sweaters are all starting to come out and scarves and all the great things about fall. I, uh, I've already been making things like soup and stew and I made pumpkin muffins the other day and fall is probably my favorite season out of all of them. My favorite holiday, Halloween, falls in it. I'm also a big fan of Thanksgiving and I love the color changes throughout the year and I love that it's crisp and it's cool without being too cold yet. Um, come winter, I probably won't be so enthusiastic about the season change. Well, anyway, this is my third time trying to record now because every time I either got distracted or one of my kids came through. It's a little later in the day than I normally record. And so my son is home from school, my daughter's here. My husband just got home yesterday. So that's nice and I'm very happy to have him back. But we ended up going out and running a bunch of errands today that needed to be done, which means I did not record at my normal time. And you may notice the it's a little darker in here than usual. I don't have my optimal early afternoon light. It's starting to get a little dark. Well, so I've decided that from now on, if I'm going to keep doing these, I'm going to take notes. So I pulled out my little notebook I've made, in the, made before. And I've got show notes, <laughs> so I know what to, I'm going to talk about in what order and try to stay on task today. So I guess I'll start with finished objects, because that seems like a logical place to go. And last week, you saw I finished this starving musician hat for my four-year-old uh, out of a Knit Picks Swish Worsted Tonal in Summer Blooms on size 8s. The pattern is by Laura Linneman, and I think it's a hat version of a pattern that was originally a beret, it looks like. But anyway, I had modified it to use worsted weight yarn instead of bulky or chunky. And I went to US size 8s, and for my daughter's hat, I cast on 72 stitches and knit 6 inches before doing the decreases. And last week you saw I had started one for my son. Well, my son's is now done. And as you see, it still kept spiraling. <laughs> the colorway had a very definite spiral pattern to it. But it's okay. He likes it, and I like it. This one was done in, again, Knit Picks Swish Worsted Tonal, but in canopy. Again, on US size 8s. And instead of doing a 72-stitch pattern, I did 78 stitches. And I knit for 7 inches before doing the crown decreases. And it doesn't sound like it would be that much bigger of a hat, but there is a pretty good size difference between the two of them. And considering my kids aren't that far apart in age, it's a pretty sizable difference in their heads, but the hats fit each of them very well. They're both pretty happy. And when I need another very quick project, I'm going to go to um, knit them matching stripy mittens. I have some more of the same yarn, except for in a colorway called Kindling, which is brown. And I'm going to make them matching brown and respective color striped mittens. And if I still have some left, I might even knit them a cowl or something else to get them through until the really bad chilly winter comes. So anyway, those turned out good and I'm happy. But I have another much bigger finished object to show you. So after just over a month of complaining nonstop, I have what a finished color affection. Let's see if we can see this. This thing is huge. <laughs> Let's see if I can back up a little bit. Here it is and it's full finished and lightly blocked glory. As you can see this edge stayed a little tight. I tried really hard to keep it loose and it didn't really work and I ended up with these strange eyelets which didn't tighten back up with getting wet but see and actually it matches my clothing today. <laughs> my shirt matches almost exactly the blue-green colorway Caribbean Mist, and my sweater very closely matches the pink colorway, which is named Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. 
and they're paired with a neutral called driftwood. So here it is, and it used up just about 940 yards of this Jade Sapphire Silk Cashmere 2 ply, which I think I had mentioned in the blog entry about this. I wasn't sure what to classify this yarn as because on the ball band, it gave no information for what weight the yarn is or what size needles it recommended or a gauge suggestion. The database on Ravelry called it a lace weight, but when looking at it weight-wise, it was less of a lace weight and more of a light fingering. And the pattern, which it was written by Vera Valamaki, we'll pretend I know how to pronounce Scandinavian names, <laughs> Um, she originally wrote it for lace weight or fingering weight yarn. And for the lace weight, she gave the needle size as two, and for fingering weight, she gave it as a six. So I went smack dab in the middle on a US size four and went from there. And I think it turned out pretty well. It's super soft, and I'm not sure how I'm going to wear it yet, but uh, it's very big and it actually goes around my shoulders, which is nice because most shawlets and things I try to knit don't go around my shoulders very well. As you can see, it's uh, it's nice and it's big and it's light. It's very pretty and so, so soft. Yeah, it matches my outfit today. <laughs> I didn't even do that intentionally. But yeah, so it's done and I'm happy with it. Um, like a lot of other people who have done this pattern already, I noticed that I used considerably less yardage than Vera says the pattern calls for. And unfortunately, this is one where a lot of people have not been recording the amounts they actually used versus what the pattern says, and I'm starting to suspect it was one of those cases where the designer just counted full skeins out rather than figuring out yardage. And that can be a good thing sometimes, but if you're yarn substituting, it's nice to know if you really need that full amount or if you can actually get away with less. So I guess that would be one criticism of the pattern that I would have is that I like precise amounts versus whole skein estimations on a pattern. I like knowing up front to almost to the yard or even to 10 or 20 yards more how much it should take. Um, the other um, criticism I had, and I just did a blog entry about this, where I thought last week that I had made a mistake. It turns out it wasn't a mistake. It's actually a design feature on the shawl. Someone else had finally taken a picture of this. But on this section of the shawl, after you finish pattern repeat 10, you have all this shawl left over. And the pattern itself never tells you that there is going to be um, stitches left over that are not going to get eaten up in the short rows. And because of this, I kind of assumed they should have all been. Sorry, my hair is bothering me today. I'm having a very bad hair day. It just doesn't want to sit right. It wants to spike out at funny angles. It's driving me nuts. Um, so don't mind me. I'm probably going to fiddle with it quite a bit. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to, though, which is making me all the more self-conscious about it. But anyway, back to this. So I had originally thought I did it wrong, and then I finally found one more out there that I saw a picture of and realized, no, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. So if you're out there and you're doing this shawl or you're considering it, you're not going to eat up all your stitches. There are enough left over that it would look like you can do another pattern repeat and a half. I wouldn't. Um, there you go. And the bind off I did for that was the one where you knit two stitches and then you knit them together through the back of the loop and then repeat all the way around. At the end of this shawl, I had 505 stitches on needles. The bind off took me oh goodness, a good hour, maybe a little bit longer, but it was worth it. It's done and I'm very happy. And that means I got to move on this week and I started two days ago on my next project which was I started the UMA pattern that I had talked about before by Bon Marie Burns of Chic Knits. And I started it in that pretty ghost colored colorway that I had shown you, those huge skeins, the ones bigger than my head. They're still pretty big even in cake form. I mean, I, had to, I actually bought a jumbo ball winder 
just so that I could knit these <laughs> and get them skeined. Um, using that thing's been a bit of a learning curve, but yeah. So anyway, I skeined up two of the four, three and I calculated out approximate yardage in them and it's looking like she said that they should be about on par with what I bought. Maybe I might end up a few yards ahead. So two days ago I cast on the cardigan and so far I have the back knit down to the bottom of the arm shaping and I've got the left front done with the collar down to the arm shaping. And so far, based on the size that it is, it's actually looking like it's going to be a really good fit. So I'm hoping that this won't grow too much. I kind of guessed based on how I know superwash wools react when they're blocked. And I knit slightly tighter than gauge. And I think I cast on the, oh, I want to say it was a 43 inch size. It might have been a 42 because I went slightly bigger than I normally do because I want to be able to wear this over long sleeve shirts and you know other things because it's it's a worsted weight cardigan it's definitely a fall winter one well, anyway it's fitting pretty good as it is and at the end here it will be top down picked up sleeves and I'm getting ready to start the right side of the front and then I think from here the, the uh, construction will then take me all the way across connecting all the pieces and knitting the rest of the cardigan and then I'll do the sleeves it's the yarn is very squishy even in cardigan form it's so lovely in person it's this beautiful dusty uh, linen color um, I can totally understand why she called it ghost it, it kind of um, makes me think of when I read Great Expectations by Charles Dickens and I think her name what was it Miss Havisham the old lady who had been uh, jilted at the altar and they discussed her home being dusty and everything covered in sheets. This makes me think of that a little bit every time I knit it and it makes me smile because it's the right time of year for these sorts of things and it ties in with my love of Halloween. So I have named this project Ghastly Uma and at the rate I'm knitting I might even have it as a finished object for next week. We'll see. Now that I've said that I probably won't finish it but we can see. I'm really, really hoping. Other than that, oh, let's see, and then if you want to know anything about that project, I got close to the gauge I think I need on US size 10s because I knit a little tight. And this is Twisted Fiber Art Olivia, and the colorway is Ghost. Great stuff. She is a wonderful seller. I've bought from her before, and she made a little there goes my daughter. Note in the purchase that she was very curious about why I had bought such large quantities of this and another solid coordinating colorway of hers called Feather. So I'm thinking when I'm done, I'm going to message her on Ravelry and just link her to it if she hasn't been kind of peeking and maybe just say, hey, this is what I used it for. I'm hoping she's not going to keep doing that because that's going to be a little annoying. As I had said in I think my previous video and again in a very recent blog post, I've been stashing a lot in the last month, month and a half. And I kind of wanted to share some of that stuff with you guys and show off my new pretties. If you're not a Ravelry friend of mine and you haven't seen the <laughs> onslaught of all the pretty yarn, I decided I would pick out a few new things maybe this week and show you. And since I'm all psyched about Halloween this week, I decided to share colorways that are Halloween themed and particularly use neon green because apparently I have that color on the brain right now. So the first thing I wanted to show you I actually got from a D stash and it is 716 sock which is an 80% superwash merino 20% nylon yarn on a, in a colorway called Worse Than Zombies. As you can see it's this kind of neon green with lighter gray and I think the red splotching is on purpose lighter gray and red splotches stripes and then a darker charcoal gray I don't think you can see the splotching I don't know what focus on me I don't know you can kind of see a little bit right there that there's a little bit of redness to it I think it might be on purpose 
it almost looks like yes like decaying flesh and blood spatter which is kind of fun um i had seen uh, no knit sherlock on ravelry had knit up socks in this and as soon as i saw that I went immediately to the stash pages to see if anyone was de-stashing and I just had to have it. Apparently this must have been done for the Stockinette Zombie podcast because it also has a button for it. And then the other colorway I want to show you is from Dancing Dog Dye Works, which I've shown you guys a couple of times now. I really like Michelle's work. Well anyway, she started offering up a colorway of the month where you can pre-order and she'll die up to order, you know, so many slots. Um, and this last month's color was based on the new Tim Burton movie, Frankenweenie, which I got on Sock Base and the Aaron Waite, which I think is called Chubby Puppy. Yes, Chubby Puppy <laughs> and Twist Sock in the same colorway, uh, Frankenweenie. I think they're both Superwash Merino. I could look. Let's see here. Yes, 100% superwash merino, 181 yards for this. And yes, 100% merino for the twist sock, 400 yards. Pretty standard for fingering weight. You can see they're fun. And it's very similar to the stockinette zombies, which is why I decided to uh, put them together. So apparently, this is a colorway I'm kind of digging right now. This whole black, gray, and neon shocking chartreuse -y green fun stuff so I might over however many of these videos I do show off some more things because I could definitely do color based ones because like the color of ghost here I managed to order two or three more yarns that are almost this exact same color Apparently there are certain colorways that I'm in love with at the moment and I'm just stashing them like crazy. So anyway, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about and now I get to have the fun of trying to figure out how to splice together all these segments because I couldn't get a break today, like nobody wanted to give me one. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I may talk to you next week, but we'll see. I hope you all are having a great day, kittens, and you're finally getting some knitting done. Because there's something about uh, September that just kind of brings back the knitting mojo, and mine has definitely come back full force. It was it was kind of languishing in July and into August. and Now that September's hit and things are cooling down, it definitely feels nice to be making the needles work. So yeah, now that I've been all awkward and telling you I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go. I'll uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.